Imagine lighting 33 rocket engines at once and expecting them all to behave perfectly. That's what SpaceX does with every Starship launch. And somehow, it works. Every launch from Starbase isn't just a test of rockets, it's a symphony of combustion, a mechanical orchestra where each Raptor engine must play in tune, in time, and in perfect balance. Because when you have 33 engines, even one mistake, one misfire, one unstable thrust vector, can turn this orchestra into chaos. But SpaceX seems to have cracked the code. From the terrifying explosions of the early Starship tests to the near-perfect liftoff of Booster 10, the synchronization of 33 Raptor engines has become one of the most complex feats of engineering ever attempted. And today, we're going deep into how SpaceX pulls it off. How they ignite, balance, monitor, and control those 33 raging Raptors to work as one single engine. Each Raptor 2 engine is a full-flow staged combustion engine, meaning both fuel and oxidizer are pre-burned and fed into the combustion chamber at insane pressures. Each one produces about 230 tons of thrust. Multiply that by 33, and you get a staggering 7,600 tons at liftoff, more than double the Saturn V's first stage. But raw power isn't enough. You can't just light them all and hope for the best. The engines must ignite in a precise sequence and pattern because lighting 33 simultaneously could cause catastrophic overpressure under the launch mount. So SpaceX engineers use what they call a staggered ignition sequence. Engines light up in waves, milliseconds apart, carefully choreographed by Starbase's control software. This method reduces acoustic shock, distributes thermal stress, and prevents overpressure in the flame trench. It's like a domino effect of ignition, perfectly timed. A tenth of a second too early or late, and the booster could shake itself apart. Now that we've lit the engines, how do we keep them synchronized? That's where SpaceX's engine controller system comes in, the digital nervous system of Super Heavy. Each Raptor has its own engine controller, a compact box filled with sensors and logic processors. It monitors chamber pressure, turbo pump speed, temperature, and thrust vector angle, thousands of data points per second. But here's the trick. All 33 controllers must communicate with each other in real time through a high-speed data bus that ties everything to the booster's central flight computer. This computer, built on SpaceX's custom avionics hardware, processes data from hundreds of sensors across the vehicle, comparing performance across all engines every millisecond. If one Raptor starts to drift off optimal mixture ratio or thrust level, the system instantly adjusts fuel flow or gimbal angle to bring it back in sync. This digital ballet happens faster than any human could perceive. We're talking control loops in the microsecond range. It's basically like running 33 independent engines as one unified machine. Lighting and monitoring are one thing, but controlling direction that's where things get really tricky. Not all Raptors gimbal. Only the inner 13 engines, called the center cluster, can pivot to control pitch, yaw, and roll. The remaining 20 outer engines are fixed, providing raw thrust only. That means the center engines must steer a 120-meter-tall rocket while it's producing more than 7,000 tons of thrust. How? through a system of hydraulic actuators in real-time vector control, guided by onboard sensors and gyros. Every time the rocket tilts or drifts, the system recalculates, adjusting gimbal angles by fractions of a degree to maintain stability. This requires near-perfect synchronization, because if even one engine overcorrects, the booster could oscillate violently. SpaceX uses a PID control algorithm, proportional, integral, and derivative, to constantly predict and counter errors. It's the same logic used in autopilot systems and robotics, but here it's applied to engines producing literal earthquakes of thrust. The result? Super Heavy doesn't just fly, it balances itself dynamically every millisecond. Let's talk throttle control, another key to synchronization. Unlike Falcon 9's Merlin engines, 
which throttle down to about 40%, Raptors can throttle much lower, even around 35% of full power. But when you have 33 engines, even small throttle variations cause massive asymmetries. So SpaceX's control software manages throttle profiles per engine, adjusting them to maintain even thrust distribution. For example, outer ring engines might run slightly lower to reduce bending loads, while inner engines run higher to maintain vertical lift. The system also handles engine out scenarios automatically. If one Raptor fails, the computer immediately compensates, increasing thrust on adjacent engines to keep balance and maintain trajectory. This has already happened. During Flight 9, a few Raptors underperformed or shut down early, yet the booster still completed its ascent cleanly. That's not luck, that's synchronization at work. A living, breathing control system adjusting on the fly, literally. Now imagine 33 engines firing together. That's not just thrust, it's vibration, shock waves, and acoustic chaos. When so many engines operate in close proximity, they can enter what engineers call resonant coupling, where vibrations amplify instead of cancel. This was a huge concern early on. At full power, the base of Super Heavy experiences sound levels above 180 decibels, enough to shatter concrete. To counter this, SpaceX uses a combination of acoustic dampers around the launch mount flexible mounts under certain Raptors to absorb harmonics, and software-based phase synchronization, ensuring engines fire in slightly offset cycles to reduce overlapping vibration waves. It's like tuning a 33-string guitar, where each note must align but not interfere, and the payoff is a stable, controlled thrust structure, something no rocket in history has achieved at this scale. SpaceX doesn't just control Raptors in real time, it learns from them. Every test flight streams terabytes of data, pressures, flows, temperatures, gimbal positions, all fed into SpaceX's AI-assisted analysis systems back in Hawthorne and Starbase. These algorithms detect patterns, predict failures, and refine next flight tuning parameters automatically. It's a machine learning loop for rocketry. Every launch makes the next one smarter. That's why you'll notice how each super heavy flight looks smoother than the last. Fewer flameouts, steadier ascent, more balanced thrust. The synchronization isn't static, it's evolving. SpaceX is literally training its rockets to fly better over time. SpaceX didn't start perfect. In the early days, the Falcon 9's nine Merlins gave them the experience they needed. Smaller scale, simpler coordination. But with Starship, they scaled that up nearly four times in diameter and over three times in complexity. Flight after flight, they burned, exploded, rebuilt, learning how tiny timing errors could cascade into total destruction. Yet each failure taught them something new about synchronization, how to stagger ignition better, how to manage pressure surges, how to balance fuel flow between engines, and how to reignite stability mid-flight. This iterative philosophy, test, fail, learn, repeat, is exactly what made 33 engine synchronization possible today. SpaceX's goal isn't just to launch successfully, it's to reuse rapidly. For that, synchronization is even more critical during landing burns and boostback maneuvers. Booster 15 and later versions are expected to use only three center raptors for landing, while the rest throttle down or shut off. The system must transition from 33-engine full thrust to three-engine fine control seamlessly. And soon, Mechazilla will join the dance, catching the booster using precision timing between falling rocket and moving tower arms. Every millisecond counts. Every Raptor must behave predictably, identically, and in harmony. When that happens, when SpaceX perfects synchronization so deeply that Starship can launch, land, and relaunch within hours, it'll mark the dawn of true reusable rocketry, and the 33 synchronized hearts at its core will make it possible. So, next time you see Starship lift off, watch those 33 flames ignite in perfect rhythm. Each one has its own heartbeat, its own brain, and its own story to tell. Because behind that thunder, behind that blinding plume, lies one of the greatest achievements in human engineering, a machine orchestra conducted by fire and code. But here's the real question. If SpaceX can synchronize 33 engines, what happens when they build one with 40?
If you love diving deep into the tech that powers humanity's greatest rockets, hit that subscribe button and smash the like. It really fuels the next deep dive. This is your host, bringing you the thrill of rocketry, one launch at a time. See you at the next countdown.